All right, this is one of the core classic cause type questions without necessarily being that, well, I suppose it is. Looking at the CPU advances of the last four years and the possible leaps to come in the future, if someone has a modern eight core AMD or six core Elder Lake CPU, uh, will there even be a need to upgrade the CPU in the next four to five years? So really, I mean, this can just be six core CPUs in general, as far as I'm concerned, like the Ryzen 5 5600, but certainly yep. Elder Lake, which is faster again. Look, for the next four to five years, is uh, that's quite a, a time frame to predict, but I'm going to be, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one to answer because if you're paying serious Halo type money, like yep. premium money, so think like Broadwell E type money for a six core CPU, therefore you are expecting Halo flagship performance a no compromise gaming solution. Yep. A single stutter is a deal breaker. You're buying it to be the fastest thing, right? Yeah. Yep. So in that sense, absolutely not going to last four to five years because two years time, there'll be something that is certainly much faster and you are the kind of person that would want that product. Yep. So why are you buying a six core processor today? Why are you buying a, a 12400 or a Ryzen 5 5600? Buying it because it's a good value part today and it represents good value gaming. It's certainly powerful enough to play all current games without any issues. That's even true when paired with a high-end GPU. So you're buying it as a good value part. So will it still be able to play games in four years' time and you know have been a good value part? I would say yes. Again, four years is quite some time out, and we are expecting to have a lot of changes, but the gaming industry moves slow. Yes. So. And I think as well for productivity, this is very easily answered that you would want to upgrade mm -hmm. time is money it's sort of thing. But you wouldn't be buying a six core or even yeah. an eight. You wouldn't even be buying an eight core. So yeah, you'd buy the, the flagship case. stuff. Yep. I think for games, and I, I can't remember why I was recently talking about this, whether it was on a live stream or whether it was on like the Moore's Law is Dead podcast or one of those places. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to games and game development, we've seen over the last however many years, maybe even a decade, that game developers haven't really utilized too many of the CPU resources. And I think it comes down to, well, firstly, the previous consoles, so previous to the PlayStation 5 era, the CPUs were very, very slow, mm -hmm. very slow. And they're now Zen 2 era. They're very slow is, compared to a Ryzen 5 5600. Yeah, so they're, they're slow now mm -hmm. as well compared to the fastest parts, but they're certainly... The the previous CPUs were, were so much slower compared to the current stuff sure. is what I'm saying. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, for PC hardware, CPU development was stagnating massively. Mm -hmm. So during the time that a lot of the game engines that we currently see today being used significantly, like Unreal Engine 4 is one example, was being a lot of work was being put into the development during Intel's period of stagnation. Mm -hmm. So if you're a game engine developer and you're seeing Intel come out with you know, 5% gains year on year, why would you bother making CPU features that would use, would rec require eight cores? Yeah, or require desktop CPU. Significantly $1,000 CPU. Because you're looking at what's happening in the market and you're like, well, that's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. So what you'd design your engine around would be the hardware of the time and sort of a look into the future for the next few years. Mm -hmm. Whereas over the last five years, I think what we've seen is well, there's been simply a lot more performance being put into these CPUs. So as game developers are creating the next generation of game engines, mm -hmm. I mean, true next generation engines like Unreal Engine 5 yep. as an example, ones that are designed for from the ground up or at least significantly overhauled for like PlayStation 5 architecture, Xbox mm -hmm. Series X architecture, you know, game developers now can see that CPU performance is increasing much more substantially. And I think as these game engines start being rolled out, there is the potential that we'll see games start utilizing CPUs more because they're not sitting around saying, oh, well, you know, if I put in this major, like let's say they want to significantly increase the NPC count mm -hmm. in their engines. Mm -hmm. Previously, they were like, well, that's not going to run on any hardware. It's not yep. going to run on my quad core CPU and mm -hmm. we're not expecting anything better than a quad core anytime soon. Whereas today they can make more forward looking engines that can scale better because they know that those that hardware will exist in the future. Yeah, the people that, I think one of the big mistakes, the people who talk about six cores, like a Ryzen 5, 5600X being no good for gaming in the future, they're, they're, they're misinterpreting or they're just ignoring what we've seen. And everything you've said is true, but there's, a, there's an extended lag added to that. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. it, it's sort of the lowest common denominator type thing, the weakest link in the chain. 
Yeah, we have to get to a point in time where the 5600X, that level of performance, so forget core counts, that level of CPU processing power is sort of the minimum. That's what yep. everyone has. And then you build from that. So, yep. and then it, really for that to be discontinued, useless, obsolete, the 5800X level of processing power has to be the bare minimum. Yep. And then you go on from that. And again, there's, as I, as I alluded to earlier, there's sort of two separate conversations where are you expecting halo performance? Are you expecting yep. just mid-range, it works performance? So again, everything you've just said is true, Unreal 5 engine, but that doesn't mean all Unreal 5 engine games will require a 5800X. No. It just means that that engine has the ability to scale to the point where it would. Yeah, th that's what I'm hoping we see more of mm -hmm. with fast CPUs. It's not that we see games that completely choke up a 5600X, mm -hmm. but hopefully game developers are putting in features where, you know, previously the difference between a slow and like at least what I would class like a minimum tier CPU and the mm -hmm. absolute fastest CPU, I think previously was a lot lower than yeah. it is today. Mm -hmm. Like there are people today using... I don't know, like like your Ryzen 5 1600 example from earlier, compared to a 5950X, the gap is like absolutely enormous yeah. in terms of, of the processing power difference in a consumer platform. Mm -hmm. Like you can run both of those CPUs on the same motherboard. So I th I'm hoping that these next generation engines have a nice baseline that will run on reasonable hardware, mm -hmm. but gives people that are buying those flagship products a reason to have bought that product. Like for example turning up the NPCs massively or maybe there's other advanced simulation features that you could run on a CPU. That's what I'm hoping that we see mm. and what what people will benefit from. But like like we're sort of talking about, the la there's a lag. We're not there yet. We've had, you know, quite powerful gaming CPUs for no a number of years yet and these engines are only just starting to be used in games. Yeah. So I guess with the four to five year example, that's when we sort of start expecting yeah. that to become a yeah. thing. 